Hey everyone, Readabilities New York. Um, my name is Edward Lovelace, the director of Name Me Luand. Um, thank you so much for coming to see our film. Uh, something I said to Luand and Rawa um, when we were when we were like in the middle of the making the film, I was like. I really believe in your story so much that I, I think people around the world might watch it and connect with it. And that really sort of, that idea really blew their minds. The idea that people outside of their immediate community might sort of really see them and empathize and uh, see something of themselves in the Wandon Rao was a real kind of like big thing for them. And they were really excited about that. And they were always, you know, asking me like, you know, when do you know if the film is going to be playing in other places? So all you guys in the cinema tonight are sort of making that dream come true for them. So thank you so much. Um, making this film was a truly life-changing experience for me and will always go down as a real sort of like a sort of turning point in my life, I guess. Um, I got married to my producer um, when I was making the film. Uh, we had a kid together when I was making the film and my connection with Luand and his family was was such a sort of true and amazing one that has now spanned five years and we've both sort of grown as families and we've sort of grown together and that's just been such a sort of joy um, and something I'm really, really proud of. When I first started making the film, um, just meeting Luand and his family and the school and being so... Um, I was just getting so much from being in their presence and what was happening in Luan's school really made me think wow if only the world operated with the same rules and empathy and love and and uh uh and just understanding that that existed in that school then the world would be a really special place and I was really like oh I, you know the idea of of sharing that with the world would do some good I really believe that um and I wasn't really too worried that much about a film sort of happening at the end of it. Like, I was just really enjoying the process. I learned sign language when I was making the film. You know, so me and Luand, you know, quite quickly, I was like, I want to be able to communicate with Luand without an interpreter. I want to be able to chat to him about things that we connect over football, as in soccer here in the UK. Um, talking about our favourite players. Um, talking about our dreams for the future. Me telling him about... Uh, this kid I was about to have and then obviously him learning about my daughter and him meeting my daughter us just being able to communicate in his language was was amazing and that was a real inspiration to, to keep me learning um, BSL um, and yeah like basically that process took about two years me just spending time with the family and spending time with the school and they kept on saying to me and the school did you know ed we really we're, we we really trust you we're sort of ready for the film to start now uh because they were like ed you've been in our lives for over two years and we haven't really seen a camera other than that like one day um and i was like i know that yeah but i just really want us to get to the point when the film is being made we really know each other, not just for six months, but, you know, we've really gone through things together. Um, and then by that point, I'd really immersed myself in the deaf filmmaker community in the UK and had made some really close sort of friends and allies, um, these deaf filmmakers, that, that and, and they remain friends. And I've just been shooting something with one of them last week. And um, that was amazing just to sort of be in the presence of just these really beautiful artists who were so talented and gifted and they loved Luand and they sort of gave themselves to the project in a really amazing way. Uh, and we teamed up with um, this Kurdish producer, Bayan, uh, who's now a director and is making a film that I'm execing and uh, her role was amazing as well. We basically got this sort of family of filmmakers together um, that was that just made the experience really really beautiful making the film and what was amazing was that um i'm someone who who definitely thinks about the way stories are told visually all my favorite films have quite a strong visual identity i guess <clears throat> on the way i make films i really see it sort of visually you know instead of writing scripts i sort of build these like visual kind of um storyboards of how i think my films are going to work out um and but once Luan's personality was really blossoming all of my ideas I sort of put to one side and was like right our job as a film team is just to give Luan a stage to just 
he obviously feels really comfortable in telling us his story. He's telling us stuff that he hasn't told his family yet, he hasn't told his friends yet. Um, and this film needs to just basically give him give him the space, give him the opportunity to sort of tell his story and tell us what he's been through, who he is, where he wants to go, how he wants the world to be. Um, and so as a film team, we were a bit like, look, let's just get out of the way and just let Luan just sort of be the superstar that he's clearly sort of turning into. And then that sort of changed the way we were making the film a little bit. Like I, I was just like saying to the cinematographer, we just need to sort of catch the sort of stardust that is, that is falling down from him basically. Um, uh, and, and how do we do that? And so that was amazing, just being in his presence and seeing his friendships blossom and seeing his character and his humor. And that was amazing, just observing that and getting that on camera, that was, that was really beautiful. Um, uh, and so that was the sort of process of the making of making the film, um, and you know I think it's changed the way I'm gonna make films in the future. I think when I was growing up, when I was a younger director, um, there was this real pressure for you know people were encouraging me to really know my vision and, and on set, you know, the director needs to know exactly what's happening. And there's going to be this big crew of people, and and if and as a director, if you're not sure which way to turn people will be like you know well you know we need a leader and we need someone with a really specific vision and I'm I'm definitely born that way to like have quite strong ideas in my head but what's been amazing on this film is learning that um, often the best film is made when a group of people can collectively come together and make decisions together as a unit but then also you know some of the stuff that the family were going through that was connected so much to their Kurdish culture, Bayan, our Kurdish producer, you know, I said to her, this this part of the film is very much yours. Yeah, you're the right person to sort of know how to edit this, to know how to guide this and to speak to the family about this. And no one's better suited than you because you grew up in the same place as them and you've had the same experiences as them. And then obviously me and Luand had and still have a really, really tight relationship, but the relationship that Luand uh created with these two deaf filmmakers that i made the film with um they're producers but they've since gone on to write and direct and um the way luan connected with them and really saw them as heroes really and um you know basically our film team being a group of people um really made me think twice about how your role is as a director and um you not having the answer but you knowing that you knowing where you think it should go but always encouraging other voices to help you make that decision is something that I, I really learned from the film and something I'm going to take on in my in my next projects and that's that that's just that's a joy um Luan and his family now oh yeah it's also worth saying that something that was so amazing about Luan's family was that when we were making the film they obviously didn't know about their status. So obviously they got their right to remain in the UK when we were editing the film. So we'd sort of finished shooting the film. Uh, and the fact that we made this film with them for five years and they didn't know if they were going to stay or go and that anxiety that obviously that causes every single day for all of them, they didn't know whether one day they would just be told that the following day they'd have to leave. That happened a couple of times, which but then they were allowed to stay in the end. But, um, um, and I just want to say thank you to them for always finding so much, um, energy to be so joyous to be around and to find, find reasons to laugh. And, you know, they're such amazing hosts. The fact that they were, they were being, being such amazing people and so fun to be around, even though they were going through this thing is such a testament for, to who they are and what type of family they are. And the way they're raising their kids is I'm just learning from Luan's mum and dad, just because they love their kids so much and them putting a brave face on the the, the whole time is, 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 is just astounding to me. Um, so obviously, yeah, they're in the UK now still they're you know, Luan, this, the, you know, they're just growing as such a beautiful family. It's quite interesting because you can tell Rower's way more like his dad and Luan's way more like his mum. Um, and Luan is just, you know, he's a young man now. He's not a kid anymore. Um, that's for sure. So that's really special to see. Uh, he's going to be an adult before we know it. Um, 
And so they're doing really, really well. We've got a really close relationship with them. And yeah, that's something I'm super proud of. Um, and yeah, the experience of the film on Luan and his family. Yeah, I, I really think the thing that I'm most sort of proud of was that, you know, I really just, or I always think whenever you're making a documentary, how can it have a positive impact on, on the people that you're making it with? And really that's like, I really just believe in the process of making a documentary for everyone, for the filmmakers, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the um, protagonists. If that's a positive experience, how the film ends up is a secondary thing. I'm not saying it matters less, but it, 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 it it's another thing altogether. If the process is something you can truly say as a filmmaker that you know is having a positive effect on, on the people you're making it with and you're making it in a way that everyone is getting something from it and it's putting some positivity out into all of our lives, then you know you're on the right track and, 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 and that's something I'm... That's, I mean, I'm sort of obsessed with that, with all the films I make, making sure that the people I'm making it with feel like it's benefiting them in some way, um, you know, enriching their life somehow. And with Luan, definitely, like watching Luan, there were actually quite a few moments, obviously, that we couldn't include in the film because it was about Luan's relationship with the crew. But I think Luan meeting these deaf filmmakers and sort of beginning to see a deaf adult not just as his teachers because that was mainly you know the most you know really the people that Luan knew who were adults and and deaf were his teachers before we started making the film and then obviously him meeting these artists that were making the film with me and my wife Fleur you know it, it was just really amazing just to see Luan realize that he can do anything he wants to do he could, you know, be a filmmaker, he can be a storyteller. I think he wants to be like an engineer, which is really cool. Um, but seeing the effect on him of of hanging out with these two filmmakers and Luan's parents, that's something that was really important to Luan's parents was meeting these meeting these deaf artists and really kind of them beginning to be like, Luan can do anything and his deafness isn't gonna hold him back. Like his deafness is part of his identity and Luan is unstoppable and Luan is Luan because of all the things that he is um, and he will go on to do everything he wants to do in life and, and that's just amazing um, so yeah the process of making the film I really believe had a really positive effect on the family you know Bayan our Kurdish producer she she ended up playing a quite pivotal role in their court cases in the UK because they only had an interpreter before her but then suddenly she was there in court with them really kind of helped like being a fam being a family member basically to them and, and before we started making the film they didn't have that and Bayan's relationship with the with the parents is a really kind of special one and you know Luan's mum and Bayan are like sisters so um that that just makes me feel like the experience is just a really positive one so that's that's joyful. Um, and yeah, what am I doing next as a filmmaker? You know what, Make, making a film that means so much to you and making it for quite a long time, it's quite a hard thing to uh, to sort of get over. And you sort of don't want to get over it. You don't want it to end because it's um, cause it sort of brought you a lot of joy. But, but at the same time, us filmmakers are like stressing about getting it finished, getting it finished. Otherwise it feels like it's never going to end. But yeah. Um, yeah, the nice thing is that I'm making two new feature docs this year. One of them especially is in the sort of same spirit that I made, Naomi Luand. Um, it's a completely different story and a completely different film, but I guess the feeling I got from making Naomi Luand, I really wanted to have with this new film, that sort of connection um, and making a story that's really visual. You know, I, my ambitions for documentary is that... Um, I want documentaries to be to be completely limitless. Like any time I see a documentary that feels like it's not existing in the same boxes that some people in the industry want us to exist in. You know, any time I see a film that's sort of not breaking the rules but creating their own set of rules to be true to the to the story that they're telling and doing it in a in a really ambitious visual way, just in the same way that every time we go to the cinema to watch a fiction movie, you know, we are we are being invited into a whole new set of rules, you know. Past Lives was one of my, one of my favourite movies from from last year. And when I saw that I felt like I was learning a whole new way of experiencing a film. 
Um, uh, and then, you know, so many films I saw last year, I was like, wow, like this isn't just within a genre. This is sort of limitless how it's being made. Um, and that is what I want for documentary. And I'll, I feel like I've done that in some way with, 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 with Naomi Luand and with my next film. Again, I'm really trying to um, push the boundaries so that so that audiences watch watch my films and really feel like they're getting the same sort of cinematic experience that they would do watching a fiction film. Um, because I'm so passionate about documentary, you know, I want it. I want it to. I want it to get out there and be, you know. Um, I think it's a really important thing, and I think I think I think we've got to keep it alive by 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 keeping it ambitious, basically. Um, anyway, thank you so much, New York, for watching the film and listening to me. Um, yeah, really sorry we're not there. We're in the UK now making our new film, but um, yeah, such a joy to be at have our film at the festival and yeah new york's like a second home to me so um so thank you so much bye everyone see you soon bye